Good morning. All right. Today is section 23. Uh, the date is April 1830 in Manchester, New York for Oliver Cowdery, Hiram Smith, Joseph Smith, uh, Sr., Samuel Smith, and Joseph Knight Sr. And in regards, it's their specific duties within the church. All right. So, what do we got here? We've got five people. They came to Joseph Smith after the church was organized, and they asked him to inquire of the Lord what their specific duties were. So, in section 23, it gives, like, one or two verses for each person. Uh... And at the time, Joseph Knight was the only one who had not been baptized. Um, so, let's see. What do I want to share? So, for Hiram Smith and Joseph Smith Sr., in their little sections, it says that they are to strengthen the church, and this because of your family forever. And it gives a quote by Joseph Fielding Smith. Uh, he says, There's another thing of great significance in this brief blessing to Hiram Smith, which is, Wherefore thy duty is unto the church forever, and this because of thy family. Amen. It is doubtful if the prophet Joseph fully understood the meaning of this expression when this revelation was given. In later years it was made clear. Evidently it has reference to the office of patriarch, and in this office it was his duty and that of his family forever. The revelation to Joseph Smith Sr. and Hiram Smith contain an identical prediction to the effect that it was their calling to strengthen the church forever. This could not refer to their personal ministry on earth, but it has been fulfilled in the ministry of their descendants and will, no doubt, come true, as the Revelation says, forever. So that's interesting. Or um, isn't Joseph Fielding Smith Hiram's son? Or is that Joseph F. Smith? No, I think it's Fielding. So, uh, anyways... Main themes. Okay, so in Oliver Cowdery's one, it says pride. We're going to get into that, into the Ludlow. Um, but it says that we are commanded as church members to pray vocally before the world despite fear, shyness, or dislike. We must have faith in God and be willing to pray publicly. There are many, many, in, the, many in the church of whom it is a heavy cross to pray vocally, but it is a commandment. And that's in the little section for Joseph Knight. Um, in the podcast, I haven't finished it yet, but in the podcast it says, um, it says, Joseph Knight, you are to take up your cross and play vo and pray vocally, um, which obviously was a hard thing for him, uh, but the Lord is commanding us to do hard things. Oh, it's hard for me to do this. It's hard for me to do that. The Lord is commanding us to do hard things, like... Sherry Dew says, if life was easy, then it wouldn't be hard, or something like that. I don't know. But it's like, come on, peeps. Come on. Life is hard. Get used to it. All right. So, in this brief blessing for Oliver Cowdery, the Lord indicates the weakness of Oliver that eventually led him out of the church for several years. As indicated in his biographical sec sketch, C Appendix B, which I don't have, Oliver later found it hard to take direction from the prophet Joseph Smith, set himself up as being equal or superior to the prophet, and apostatized from the truth. Now, I know it was an early church and all that jazz, but I mean, that just seems. Could you imagine if you set yourself up to be better than President Nelson? That's, that's a hard thing to do. Anyways. Pride was one of Oliver Cowdery's uh, besetting sins. If he could have humbled himself in the troubled days of Kirtland, he would not have lost his place and membership in the church. Um, that which had been bestowed upon him was exceedingly great, 
and had he been willing to humble himself, it was his privilege to stand with the prophet Joseph Smith through all time and eternity, holding the keys of the dispensation of the fullness of times. However, at this uh, particular time, when this word was sought, he was free from condemnation. Now, we're human, so pride is a weakness of all of us. Uh, but here we see that when we are prideful, we lose our blessings. It says here, he could have stood by Joseph for time and all eternity. He could have, like, he wasn't an equal because there's only one prophet called. But he could have stood by his side through through life and then through time and eternity. He he could have been as revered as as Joseph is. But instead he chose to be prideful and say, no, 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 no. I'm better than him. Pride is a weakness and it's hard to root out, but we need to do it. I mean, look at your own patriarchal blessing. Look at the things that's promised in there. Like you could lose every single one of those promises by, by just being prideful, you know? Anyways. Uh, and then they talk about Hiram and then Samuel. Samuel is the younger brother of Joseph Smith and at this time he's about 22 years old and it says that he's not yet called to preach but he was the third person baptized in the dispensation and he was one of the first to be ordained to the office of an elder. Um, and then all that and well Go to Appendix A. Oof. Mm -hmm. QR, no, no, no. H I J. Joseph. cross. Well, I was looking in the right spot. Sorry. Discombobulated, I know. Anyways, in the, there we go. In the podcast, they talk about Joseph Knight and taking up his cross and play, praying vocally. Um, but let's see. The term take up your cross is found in both ancient and modern scripture, including at least three references in the Doctrine and Covenants. In Matthew sixteen twenty four, the Savior says, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. The inspired version of the Bible provides the meaning of this term as given by Jesus Christ himself. And now for a man to take up his cross is to deny himself all ungodliness and every worldly lust and keep my commandments. The meaning of this term is also clarified in other scriptures. Each person has areas of weakness where he or she must strive diligently to overcome that weakness and turn it into a strength. The term take up your cross has to do with this strengthening process by denying yourself all ungodliness and by keeping the commandments of God. There's no shame in having weakness. There is shame in sin. However, we're born, we're born with weaknesses. That's human nature. But the Lord has given us ways to overcome that, to deny all ungodliness, to take up our cross, to be disciples of Christ is to overcome our weaknesses by by doing my my study of Christ like attributes I feel like I'm I'm trying to overcome my weaknesses obviously by not being charitable to my fellow man by not seeing them for who they really are or seeing them at all there is a way to overcome and that is through taking up our cross and denying ourselves of all ungodliness. Yes, it's hard and yes, it's scary, but it's something we have to do. So anyways, those are my thoughts for section 23.
and tomorrow is section 24 verses 1 through 6. So we will see you then.